On October 20th, 1905, the two-horse stage left Rollins soon after dawn. Not a lot of time for stretching out the comforts of the wonderful Ferris Hotel. Eggs were packed under the seats, also grapes and oysters. There were so many boxes and mailbags that they were piled up beside the driver. On the way bill, the passengers were given exactly the same status as the oysters and the grapes. The young woman from Wellesley, running her eye down the list of merchandise, encountered her own name, Miss Ethel Waxham. The driver, Bill Collins, a, fe a young fellow with four days' beard, untied the bow-knot of the reins around the wheel and swung up on the seat, where he ensconced himself with one leg over the mailbags as high as his head and one arm over the back of his seat, putting up the curtain between. Kind of loathsome out here, he gave as, a, as his excuse. The Crow and the Shoshone Chiefs decided to fight each other over hunting grounds. The Shoshone Chief Washaki killed the Crow Chief, then cut out and ate his heart. There was a pack of ferocious wolfhounds in the country, kept by another flockmaster for the purpose of killing coyotes. Human beings, on foot, who happened to encounter these dogs might have preferred to encounter the rattlesnakes instead. One summer afternoon, John Love was working on a woodpile when he saw two of the wolfhounds streaking down the creek in the direction of his sons, whose ages were maybe three and four. Laddies, run! Run to the house! he shouted. Here come the hounds! The boys ran, reached the door just ahead of the dogs, and slammed it in their faces. Ethel only had time to grab a frying pan before she was beating on the dogs to get them out of the house. That spring, a flood such as no one remembered all but destroyed the ranch. At daylight, we returned to the house. Stench, wreckage, and debris met us. The flood had gone. Its force had burst open the front door and swept a tub full of rainwater into the dining room. Chairs and other furniture were overturned in deep mud. Mattresses had floated. Doors and drawers were already too swollen for us to open or shut. Once every couple of hours, the 8200 walked, raised itself up on its pontoon-like shoes and awkwardly lurched backward seven feet so dramatically compressing the dirt it landed on that smoke squirted out the sides and the ground became instant slate. Earlier that day hiking, they had come upon and dispatched a rattlesnake, a big one, over five feet long. Their mother decided to serve it creamed on toast for dinner. Small talk commenced. Finally, one of them remarked on how very good rattlers were to eat. Bill Gray said, By God, if anyone ever give me rattlesnake meat, I'd kill him. The boys went into a state of catatonic paralysis. Bill Grace was one of the most celebrated murderers in central Wyoming. <laughs> Their mother asked, More chicken, Bill? Don't mind if I do, said Bill Grace. <laughs> 